You're watching Suck Professor Special Edition Movie Review of The Revenant. I'm joined by... James. James. Hey, buddy. So look, uh, to uh, show our fans something, they can watch me in real time, quick... Uh, not real time. Uh, Photoshop sped up. I drew a, a, a famous scene from the movie. So by the time we get to the end of the review, people will have... Uh, we'll, we'll get to enjoy a, a scene that we've all seen. So that also makes me, I want to be clear, big time spoilers on the way, guys. So if you haven't seen the movie or if you don't care, uh, don't want, I mean, you know, okay, spoilers. Everybody knows what to do. Watch it or don't. James? Yep. What do you think about the movie? By the way, first of all, do you like do you like his pink lips? Yeah, that is pretty. Much, Mr. Potato Head is coming along very well. <laughs> That's Leonardo. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I drew it from memory. Oh, of course, of course. What, yes. what, what do you think I am? Fucking Monet? Give me a yeah. break. All right. So, what did you think of the movie, The Revenant? Okay. I, very simply, I like the movie. I don't think it's a best picture movie. I don't think anyone in it deserved to win best actor for the movie, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Had some problems here and there, but overall, you know, I'd say it's a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten? Yeah. I think the Rotten Tomato score was 82. Really? So you, you're well, coming in below the well, horde. screw them. Look at it. I'm drawing hair. <laughs> it was, of course, I can't leave them bald. So this is pretty cool, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm liking it. Yeah, yeah. So my take on it, I was completely enthralled the whole time maybe a little bored at a couple parts and you kind of know he's not gonna die it's a little superhero-ish in that way where you just kind of know the inevitable outcome but uh i thought the um acting although very kind of one tone maybe mm -hmm. two tone where he's either grunting or sleeping uh was very good and very compelling leonardo dicaprio usually delivers but yeah he wasn't it wasn't like a com like a dynamic broad performance like when i was in a children's theater play when i was a kid yeah. I played Edmund in line with Witch in the Wardrobe. Oh. He turns to the dark side, comes back to the light side. For the Turkish Delights. Is it, Was that a thing? Yeah, that that, oh. that's what he went for. Oh, wow. Wow, cool. So look, I got his head done. Now I'm drawing. What does that look like? Uh, he's... Ah, I know this. He's buried. No, you idiot. <laughs> he's buried in the ground. And Bear is the right word, but not he's buried. He's emerging from the pile of dirt. No. Uh, he's got his uh, drinking flask. Yep. Hold, wait for it. It's coming up. Okay, so um, the camera work was incredible. Yeah. Like the, the way they moved over the water and the way they just yeah. had that slow control and that steady cam thing or whatever. Yeah. Best cinematography, absolutely. Oh, did it win? Last no, I, I don't know about that, but if I had to nominate something for that, that's what I would nominate yeah. this type of right. picture for. And by the way, we're recording this the day after the Oscars where Leonardo won for Sexiest Man Alive. Yeah. 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 Um, Somebody famously, I think, I don't know who wrote this line. It was a funny comedy line, though. They said, uh, like a supermodel's vagina, please give a warm welcome to Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> That's just a very random sentence that I remember hearing on a comedy podcast, somebody, as a as a presenter for an awards show. Um, look, bear, bear cuts. Hey. You like those? That's pretty good. Yeah, so we're getting closer. I'm close to, you see, I did the little swirly line thing on the yeah. guy. It's pretty cool. It's pretty, now look, they're, I'm doing the bear now. <laughs> so uh, did the bear rip his beard off? You know, James, <laughs> you can you can go fuck yourself. I'll wait for it. I'm waiting for that. Maybe there's a coming. I'm waiting. I only, but, but you don't, don't the bear need. I need to worry about worry about the bear's beard, okay. not not Leonardo DiCaprio's beard. Okay, fair enough. Face. You try drawing a bear. Oh, I can't. By the way, I had to draw. Yeah. I, I, the bear took me a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I struggled with the bear. <laughs> Speaking of struggling, uh, yeah, I, we, I've said probably controversially that I don't think he deserved best actor for it, but there's no denying that he went through a lot of crap shooting this movie. It I mean, looked hard. You cannot put on that much weight in terms of clothing and go into water during that time of the year and not freeze to near death. You know he suffered for this movie. Yeah. And famously, no, I shouldn't say famously, uh, so but I did read that, you know, when he was eating the, the bison liver, the raw liver, yeah. and when he threw up on camera, that was real because he's a vegetarian. That's uh, not something uh, he would do. Oh, was that real meat? Uh, yeah, it was a real bison they, liver. They didn't get stunt meat? No. Like a big piece of popcorn or something? I don't something? think they did. I think he was going for the authentic reaction, so I give him a lot of credit for going because I, I wouldn't do that, but then yeah. you have to ask... Is what he's doing, is suffering for the sake of suffering for the camera, is that classically considered acting, or is that just someone going above and beyond for his art? I would say that's uh, high-level acting. Okay. And because because me or some jamoke would break their role, they'd go, Ah, oh, fuck! Give me my goddamn Dasani! Where's my Aquafina? I want some glacier water! They're surrounded by glacier yeah. water. 
you know, but like he stays in character, he commits to the scene, he sticks it out, you know, and that's actually like if I was a filmmaker, like, all right, we don't have to reset that fucking shot. That shit costs us a lot of money. I'm not sure I would go say that to him right away. Yeah. But what do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with that mostly. Yeah. What did you think of his character, though? That's that's what I'm kind of interested in. Oh, well, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I mean, you don't really, he loves his son. His whole motivation is that they didn't, they did some backstory. He had a hot wife, a hot Indian wife, and then a decently attractive son. And they got killed by some fuck faces. I think it was the 1820s and the frontier. And, but he was like dances with wolves and this whole thing. We don't know why he was this white guy living with the Indian people and become, and he kind of was one of the, he was sort of more aligned to the side of humanity with the Indian people. By the way, did you see I made of a mouth? <laughs> yeah, you, I'm, I'm, I'm watching. Open. I, it, it did open. It just, well, I mean, like, I'm waiting yeah. for like the, the end to see where it ends up. Oh, it may open or may, might not. Right. We'll see. You'll, you'll see, oh, my, my friend. Um, Good bear head, though. Pretty yeah, good bear head. I'm impressed. A little shine on the nose. That's, yeah. that's, that's not easy to do. Uh, so his motivation is to survive and then vengeance. It's sort of, I mean, it's, it's mainly like if he didn't need the vengeance because he saw his son get killed, he wouldn't have had the uh, uh, stick to 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 endure all that pain. Right. I'm gonna say that, I know I'd just yeah. be making up bullshit. I'm gonna say that I did not like his character, Hugh Glass, I think his name was, and I the reason being that I think he should bear a lot of the weight there. See what I did there? Bear, yeah, I heard it. For uh the death of the son. Because think about it this way. He knew the character of this Fitzgerald guy. He knew this was not a guy to be trusted. This is not a guy who had the moral fiber to uh-huh. bear claws. Put, Check it out. Uh, it's like a Danish <laughs> <laughs> the moral fiber to put someone above his own needs. He's a complex villain. He 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 does what he believes he needs to do in order to survive in the world he lives in. And I can understand that. And I can relate to that. And I like that he's a complex character in that regard. Yeah. But Glass needs to understand that this man is not going to keep his word in holding back to keep him alive. He knows that he's being pursued by Indians who are incredibly deadly, who yeah. are going to take him out. He knows there's only two other guys there, one of which is a young boy. Actually, three other guys, including his son, two of which are young boys, I might add, uh-huh. to protect them. So why the young the white kid and then his yes. son. Yeah. So why in the world would he lay there on a stretcher and not acknowledge that he needs to take a bullet and die for the take one for the team, basically? All he right. is the one holding them back. He yes. is the one that's going to get them caught. He is the one that's going to get his son killed. He okay. needs to let himself go. All right. Calm down there, uh, fucking Captain Kill Everybody. All right. Yes. First of all, uh, I was actually surprised that they wanted to keep him alive. The, the, mm-hmm. the amount of cost to somebody being wounded a wounded guy is much more detrimental than a dead guy you know carrying his body they had that big like that heavy stretcher nightmare i was like holy shit and then they they actually justified he's like oh he's the only one that kept us alive he's he's our he's our main dude he knows the area he's he's the the local tracker guy are you, what are you what are you reading about the the picture here, James? You digging it so far? <laughs> it's it's kind of looking like a, a dude in a bear costume, which makes me like it even more. A dude in a bear costume. <laughs> kind of his well, Leonardo he wore, like he's about to hug him. He wore bear fur the whole movie. He did. That's what he's wearing. It's not. <laughs> but actually, he didn't have the bear fur until he they killed the bear. So really, this is some continuity well, problems later. here. Okay, all right. Well, we, we can break down the Oscar worthiness of my. Yeah. my, let's, my let's just say that's my, his beard. He just fell a little bit off his bit. chin. <laughs> yeah, there's the missing beard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what were they saying about the, the motivator? Yeah, why didn't he sacrifice himself oh. so his yeah, son that's, would that's make it? it? No, because that's asking too much. I, the movie would have been 20 minutes long. Right. Uh, I, kill, right. kill me. Just kill right. me. Which is why I think they went wrong with the storyline. I think it should have been more Last of the Mohicans. He should have been attacked by the bear. He should have rolled down in the bankman. They shouldn't have found him, and he would have had to claw his way back to survival after, say, Fitzgerald took his son hostage and was going to sell him into slavery or do something terrible, and he had to go and avenge and find his son and get vengeance on that, Fitzgerald. That's actually a little what I expected after the bear fight, which happens yeah. pretty early. I was like, oh, so they're not going to find him, and then he's going to come too, and he's going to have to chop the bear apart on its because it's too heavy for him to move he's gonna have to like dismember it while yeah, it's on him or something I, I think that would have been a stronger story but well in that case the bear fight would have been he wouldn't have, couldn't have gotten that hurt you can't come back you, you well, can't yeah. survive that those kind of wounds without help yeah and by the way he had scars and stuff that were there and then not there yeah, like that well, like you know. wounds and things it's like yeah but this is a big movie they could have mm-hmm. easily had a guy take a polaroid that's what they do they take pictures yeah oh. i used to do that as a script supervisor continuity guy you did yeah it was what fun. movies uh, nothing that you've ever seen. Weekend at Bernie's? No, nah, small independent stuff. 
catch my great joke yes. there. Weekend at Baron. Baron's, yes. So we're coming up on the end of the drawing, and we're going to just take a moment to, to enjoy it once it finishes. Any other thoughts about it? The uh, villain? Oh, okay. I didn't understand. Uh, the ending where he pushes Tom Hardy into the water. Uh, he's trying to, he's like fighting him. Why did the, he didn't, was there a beef between the Indians that were walking up with their, in, on the horses? Because like they didn't establish that they wanted that guy. They were angry at the French traitor dudes who had stolen the girl, right? Right, and it, you could see from his past that he had been scalped by Indians, you know, and he had history with them, but not yeah. that particular group of Indians. There yeah, they nothing, didn't know. There was nothing that directly connected him to those, the Pawnee Pon, or the Sioux, I don't know which ones they were. Yeah, I think they were Pawnee, I don't know. Yeah. The only thing I think is like, well, the woman knew that he rescued her from that that when when she was getting you know by the horses <laughs> yeah. and she's like oh oh we got to kill that guy because he they're fighting and the, the we should kill the one that didn't i don't know yeah like my, the enemy of my enemy is my friend but i'm just trying to figure out the motivation for that because it wasn't really it was really unclear to me that he just understood they were going to kill him yeah and I, I thought i didn't understand it completely but the way i interpreted it was the entire movie was trying to say that they were both bad guys and both good guys at the same time because it would cut back and forth between the white men and the native americans you would see them from different perspectives you see the motivations of the native americans you see the motivations of the white men yeah they each had legitimate reasons for doing what they did for their own purposes of survival so you kind of understood that yeah and then at that one point you saw the indian hanging with a sign and the french what was the french it was a on de tout de savages which i assume means we are all savages yes we are all savages i took french for five and a half years i took french for six years uh, you motherfucker <laughs> god damn it <laughs> but you're actually better james took french for more than me <laughs> but was the ending saying by leonardo dicaprio's character pushing him out and saying fate will be in god's hands it's not me to decide that well, it's, he, it's like i'm not gonna kill you i'm gonna let hypothermia kill you right but is he saying <laughs> i'm gonna take the moral high ground i'm gonna leave it to the savages to handle is that i hope that's not what they were saying because no. that would diminish the movie for me i see what you mean like it's it diminishes the indians in the storyline right yeah, i hate which, calling them indian it's so ridiculous that we actually still that 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 we allow I know, that i've said that a couple times already no i'm not blaming you and it's not like it's a pc thing because it's it's like modernized it's it's mm -hmm. uh, normalized it's just it's like no, the, the fucking Christopher Columbus is an idiot. Yeah. It's like me going to Africa, but I end up in Antarctica, and I go, hey, let's call these penguins Africans. I know. It's it's stupid. It's it, crazy. It's, it's ridiculously dumb, but okay. it's been accepted. Side note, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> no, nah, okay, um, Cormac McCarthy comes to mind. He's one of my favorite writers. I've not read all of his stuff, but he writes these, like, apocalyptic, desolate, dystopian kind of... Uh, you, in sort of 1800s Western frontier sort of mm -hmm. stories, The Road. Although I don't know if that that's that's I've like read it. that's future time. But uh, that book. Blood Meridian. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't think of the rest of them. He's got a bunch, but they're really like everybody's a savage. Everybody's yeah. a violent thing. There's only a few people that are uh, allowed the gift of redemption. Mm -hmm. That are their innocence must be protected and stuff like those kinds of themes. And it's all fucking crazy and violent. This really felt like a Cormac McCarthy story a little yeah. bit. And I I get that too because I don't know if this is a style overall, but when I read The Road, I noticed that his writing style he was incredibly minimalistic. Yeah. But it was so much more powerful because he was minimalistic. And in yeah. this movie, there's very few lines of dialogue at any given stretch of the movie. Well, the script I've read the script. It's <laughs> it's a uh, uh, 140 pages of, of <laughs> okay. <coughs> oh, fuck, this is the worst movie review. <coughs> I'm sure our our suck professor fans who are video game players in their who are 14 years old love Cormac McCarthy discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so we got to fit. We're we're enjoying the picture here on the thing and we're gonna get to the part where I animated are you excited to see what I did no James, absolutely this is this is great any other thoughts about the movie we kind of wrapped it up uh, yeah, hot wife much. hot life that's what it summarizes yep. as yep. and no beard no, yeah, I, I forgot his fucking beard. <laughs> what was the why? What you you said something about the revenant? What's oh the, yeah, I wanted to ask you. What did you think the the title actually meant? Well, I, I thought they just misspelled relevant. That that's possible. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I, from what I understand, a revenant is a is a it's used a lot in like MMORPGs for like undead creatures that roam from magic magical root or something but i think it really means a mythological creature that transcends death and uh -oh. at one point in the movie he says something like i'm not afraid of death i've already done that 
Yeah. His son died. His reason to live died. All he had left was vengeance. So in a way, he was a revenant. Oh, okay. I wasn't going to go. With I was going to say something to do with this is all ignorance coming from here right now. But is revere the word that it's related to? Like you, I mean, like a like a be. like a orgiastic celebration or in, in, uh, in being unwrapped up in something completely. I don't know. I'm not making any sense at all. Fuck it. Who cares? Let's watch this bear butt fuck this guy. Oh no. Here we go. Ready? Here's the. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's that's why the mouth opens. Why didn't, I, why didn't I see this coming? What do you think, James? Are you proud of me? Look, uh, look it's even like oh, oh he drops his flask. <laughs> oh, it again? comes back. Well, I I, 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 I know it's got a loop. I yeah, I got a loop here. Look, and it's the uh, see the uh, the uh, snowy background with the frozen thing. Yep. I even made it a little bit blurry, so it looks like they're actually there. Mm. Look, here it comes. Boom. <laughs> You see his butt? Uh, What's nice about After Effects, James, and I am becoming an After Effects wizard, is you can place it in different... I, I figured, you know what? I don't think they just want to fuck at, 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 at a snowy creek. They also probably want to be on the beach, banging in front of a couple. I, I just realized that white part is his butt. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, this, this should be like bloody claw streaks. I know. I saw. I know. Oh, yeah, there's it, people on the beach. Yeah, there's people on a beach behind them. That's really fun. They're at the White House <laughs> celebrating. They're they're big fans of democracy, of course. Why would they not be? Um, his mouth opens. You see? Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Now, if I had the time, I would have given him some groans. James, you want to do some groans next? Okay. Here uh, we... I'm okay. Oh, this is them butt fucking in front of the cast of Stargate SG One. Nice. Yep. It's hard to see here, but I'm it's, glad you it, find the, the yeah. high resolution image of that. Shut up. <laughs> And they are butt fucking at a at a blockbuster. <laughs> you see how they're they're having. <laughs> well, this must have taken place in the eighteen hundreds because you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course. I mean, they're there to rent the bear, starring Anthony yeah. Hopkins and um, uh, Alex Baldwin. And then they got kicked out because the store closed. So now they're outside mm. of a blockbuster that's closing down, and that's too bad. Look at the bear. Yeah, I I know. I actually I, I should put some bloody scratches on his ass. And, and uh, oh, that's them um, butt fucking on the Pope's balcony. Nice. So yeah. I figured, you know, maybe the Vatican, you know, spotlight one best picture, shine some light on this issue. Bears banging dudes. And by the way, this is consensual. And they're, oh, they're butt fucking on Star Wars, uh, which is uh, that's the fight aboard the what what is that the Corellian Falcon? Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I Call it I, people. You know, that's the boarding party, or that's the guys trying to fight off the uh, rebels. What? Uh, not to question your oh, anatomical be beca nature of the bear. Be hold but... on. And because I wanted them to, to, to have safe sex, they didn't want to have a child. They went to Walgreens to get Plan B. Nice. Wasn't that a mother bear? How much do you know about bears? I didn't. I Well, maybe. <laughs> I'll give you that. Maybe. James, maybe. Uh asshole maybe uh he killed the mother bear as you recall in the movie right and maybe uh this is the dad bear getting revenge this uh -huh. is this, this is the plot to the second to the sequel all right james well that's it that's our revenant review everybody thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the <laughs> i like that the bear's looking right at the camera I should have made his pupils move around. I forgot to do that. But James, I'm getting pretty good at animation. That's uh, you're using your talents to good effect. Yeah, I don't know why I'm not working in this business. Yep. You know, I mean, this has Saturday morning cartoons written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> we should. <laughs>